<laughs> today I got in one minute to six. I was determined to start at six on the dot and I'm here looking at my time and I'm thinking, um, it's 5.59. But hello, 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 hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on what part of the world you are watching us from. Absta, you are the first to join today. Amazing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Right by Grace, your spot was taken today. Absta joined before you. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining, ladies. Today, we welcome you officially to the month of June. So we're done talking about children. We're now back to ourselves. Hi, Dr. Adana. I love a guest that is on time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us so early. I'll be right with your request in one minute. So I was welcoming you guys and saying welcome to today's episode of Women's Matters where we discuss the things that people don't like to discuss, the things that people skirt around. You know, we talk about them and we dissect them with our amazing guests. I mean, haven't you just been tripping for the back-to-back -back quality guests that I have been bringing? You can tell indeed that God's hand is upon this project. So welcome with me today, our delightful Dr. Adana, as we're going to be breaking down understanding and maximizing the seasons of your life i mean this is a topic that is dear to my heart so when she came up with it i was like let's go if you're catching this replay later we love you thank you for joining up with us next time we start at 6 p.m w a t it would be nice of you to join us live Thank you. 27th episode. Yes, yes, yes. I'm super excited. Hi, hi. Uh, the masterpiece herself. Look at that. Uh, uh, Ever give me masterpiece to share. This is this is pepper them things. I'm going wear my own. What? No. <laughs> Wherever we we represent. So. I love it. I love it. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Adana. So excited to have you. And Greg by Grace's good evening, Coach P. Congratulations on the 27th episode of your lives. I celebrate your consistency with Power Park sessions. Thank you so much. I mean, it is not me. What do I know? It's my guests. My guests are making me look good. I love it. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us. I mean, the topic today, when I heard that, like, ah, please just tell us. Tell us, first of all. You know, I was telling you to send me your bio. You were doing me like this, like this, like this. I said, okay, now I'm going to put you on the spot. So tell us who you are. Let our guests meet you, you know, in your own words. Who is Dr. Adana and why should she be the one talking to us today? Please. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. You are the master P P P. We call her the captain of the group, the captain of the team. I mm. really want to thank you for this honor of bringing me into your community here to discuss and to communicate as well as to learn because i'm also here to learn i okay. am a student of lifelong learning like coach wendy has trained us to be so it's an honor and it's a joy and a privilege to be here thank you for the work you're doing in the women's growth academy i must celebrate you 27 weeks right 27 yes weeks. yes we have officially passed the half mark half, yes. half of the year gone i'm like whoa wow look at that that is so back. good i mean there's no there's no end to what you can do once you just put one step in front of the other so i'm so exactly. super super excited exactly thank you so I'm dr ada i'm adana didamola i'm a medical doctor um a wife a i like to start by saying i'm a believer because that's the foundation of everything i do i am a christian i'm a believer i'm a wife i'm a doctor i'm an author a minister so we wear so many hats you know women now i love it thank you um you can add other things to it <laughs> as you <want. laughs> i here to share with women, my fellow women as well, as we do in the Masterpiece Program. Yeah, sorry, I wanted to work on my Wi-Fi because I kind of I was feeling some sort of static, so I wanted to check quickly what my network was about. I hope it's better now and you can hear me clearly. So, thank you so much. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's such a delight to have you. I mean, you're a sight for so eyes, and then you now come in my masterpiece green, and I'm like, oh, come on. 
<laughs> Love it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. We see you. Adelinda, Olufikayo, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. You know, you came up with the topics. Guys, if you want to speak on my show, please just come on. Come as you are. Come with your topics, right? I mean, I will just check and I'll find, you know, the month that your, your topic will suit the theme of the month and I'll just fit you right in, okay? So as your topic is something about women, it's going to bless us. We will be happy to have you, right? So tell me, why did you select this topic? What was on your mind? Oh, well, um, I would say one is, um the topic that kind of let me see is um spontaneously the holy spirit led me to choose that like i wrote okay. about it that it is a topic that is kind of um always reoccurring and dear to me um I'm very um, how will i put it i'm a very um conscious person when it comes to my timing um, yes. Meanwhile, my husband is here. He's giving his support. So I just want to say hi. <laughs> hi, please say hi to us. So, <laughs> say hi to you. So, um, <laughs> I'm a very conscious person about my journey, my purpose, my timing, and um, when it comes to fulfilling purpose, I'm a purpose-driven person. And because right. of that, um, it makes me always have this reflective tendency that I always want to understand that am I am i in the right season am i fulfilling my purpose for this season do i understand what this season is and mm. also am i maximizing my season because um i understand that life is in seasons and times and right. our life is not measured by duration but by duration what you make out of each season determines how far you can mm. go or what your future is going to be like so because I'm a purpose-driven person, I think that was a topic that resonated with me. And um, I think it's something that a lot of us can learn from. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I really love it. And you know why? I didn't even remember this was the exact topic you had picked until I came back to our chats. You know, just on Sunday, I had a conversation with my friends. We had, a, we had this um, six-week-long summit. And we ended up on, on um, Saturday, the last day and what we'll be talking about you know balancing work and life you know work and family life the, from the godly perspective and as we were talking i mean this matter of seasons came up because i kept on saying to people that look guys <laughs> well, i'm telling you how i'm balancing life now don't look at me and be thinking i bet i can do it i can do it oh my, this is my season yeah. there was once upon a time when my children were much younger when i couldn't oh. do anything oh. when i was you know, you know, you cannot be holding your children. Maybe you have three children under three or three children under five. And you be comparing yourself with me that my children are, are almost self-sufficient, literally. Like, I, I just wake up in the morning and say, get into the car. And everybody's in the car because I don't have to bathe anybody. I don't have to make any breakfast. I don't have to do anything. So you can't compare yourself with me if you are still hands-on with your toddlers and all of that. So life is really in seasons. And people need to just give themselves grace, yeah. right? Understand where you are at the time understand your limitations understand embrace the journey because truthfully even when you're thinking oh my god these children are so little they are so all over the place very soon they grow and then you don't have them in that cuddly state exactly. anymore so just embrace the seasons right embrace the journey wherever you are just give yourself grace accept it and embrace it yeah. now it's not me that's supposed to talk today i'm back to you so tell us how do you want to start this conversation you know my conversations basically are always like free flow you know it's freestyle we don't have any questions ahead you just give us what you want and as you speak i will you know derive some questions from there or derive how we're going to lead so please tell us what, maybe it's your journey you're going to use as an example i don't know how you're going to just teach us about this this matter of understanding your seasons maximizing them right so just tell us okay please. i would um, flow when the question coming if you have questions um, I don't mind your interrupting to ask me because out of that you can get lessons and um mm -hmm. So um one of the first things I'll just want to say is um the scripture in First Chronicles chapter twelve uh, mm -hmm. is one of the very popular scriptures that has coined this word understanding your season and time. It is mm -hmm. the children that are, were men that mm -hmm. had understand mm -hmm. of the time to know what Israel ought to do 
the heads of them, there were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. All their mm. were their, at their command because they knew what Israel ought to do. Now, yeah, per time. So the truth about it is that each and every one of us, one gift that God has given us is timing. Time. Mm -hmm. Whether you're black, you're white, you're rich, you're poor, God. That's the leveler. Yes, that's the leveler. That's a collizer. And then mm. we just don't have a life. We have a lifetime. God mm. lifetime. And then there's something Coach Wendy. Surprisingly, Coach Wendy status on the third of June because I tried to like follow her, you know, as our mm. mentor. She said mm. something very, very profound. She said, understanding the season you are in is one of the five skills you can acquire in life mm. so mm. Find out that a lot of people go through life they don't even understand the season they are in and that makes them frustrated like example mm. for women let me say as a woman let me just use my life as an example i was okay. in a season when i left medical school and i was i was um i was done with my house job I was done with my NYSC. So I just thought mm. the next thing naturally should just be to get married. To work. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. To get work. Okay, I'd already started working and to get married. But I now realize that the the course of nature as I expected, you know, I'd even put an age. Oh, by this age, by 26, 27, I should be married. I will be married. By, yeah. By 30, I should have finished giving birth. You know all those things. <laughs> I know, and I know. The funny part of it was that after everything, my house job, my NYC, it was like there was just this closed door. I would how would I put it? Like there was <laughs> God used <laughs> no movement, no movement, nothing. No, relationship was not working. You be in a relationship, mm. the next thing they'll break it up and say they're not interested. I was now wondering, ah, uh -uh, is it my village people? <laughs> What's going on? It's the problem for me. I said I feel mm. desperate. I said as in being anxious that I want mm. you know that moment when they say that um, some people that are married are praying to be single. Some people that are single are praying to be married. I know. That was the season I was in. I I wasn't um ready to enjoy my singlehood. I was in such a hurry to just get married, like get married. Not like oh. God, I'm done with this single season. So why am I not getting married? And it yeah. also affected my self-esteem, my relationship with God. Mm. Guys, because I was almost looking like desperate and I was doing things that probably I shouldn't have done until mm. at some point God decided to teach me. There was there was a relationship I was in. I was thinking, oh, this would find on, yes, surely, surely this is it. Somewhere saw Eliab and said, "Surely this must, surely, be, this must be the one." <laughs> and I was praying about the relationship, and um, one of my mentors gave me a word. He said that I should pray in the Holy Ghost. That at this moment, I have my emotions leading me, and I'm feeling desperate. That I should pray in the Holy Ghost, and if I pray in the Holy Ghost, I pray the will of God, and mm. when I. Holy Ghost is either that relationship is strengthened or it breaks. Gotcha. Yes, God will take charge. So after I started praying in the Holy Ghost, and the truth about it is that I didn't have peace about that relationship, but I just wanted to marry. Think to marry, like God, can we just call it a day? <laughs> I had it. Okay. This thing Pastor Midred said, people just want to settle. I just say, man, now nah, man. I didn't have peace. But at that point, the mm. Holy Spirit now revealed something to me about that relationship that if I had mm. that part, probably I would have had a broken marriage by now. And wow. after that, that was a deal breaker for me. The relationship the person was not faithful and all that. So mm. I just told God that I'm done with this marriage thing. I want to focus on my singlehood, focus on my mm. be a career woman, serve God. And God made me yes. I needed to understand the season I am in. That he's preparing mm -hmm. me, not just for, he's preparing me, not just as a single person, but he's preparing me for the marriage that I'm getting in. Like, mm -hmm. 
either I wait for him, either I wait for the right person, or I'll have to be waiting for the wrong person to be transformed to become the right person. So which one do I? Mm. So it was mm. also. I had a waiting season of almost five years post-graduation. Hmm. And that five years post-graduation, you asked me, what would I be doing? That was when God started teaching me the essence of that my happiness does not is not defined by marriage, that my hmm. validation is not defined by what people say about marriage, that you must be married to be complete, that my, hmm. that my completion comes from God, my validation comes from God. He started putting me into training capacity. I started going for conferences. I started building, reading the word of God. I said that, and that's mm. where the depth that I have today came from those years of studying. And mm. The depth that I have today came from those years of like focusing on God, serving. Yes. I, I just focused on my career. By the time I was getting married, I had written my book. By the time I was getting, mm. I was already a senior registrar. Like my, I had grown in my career, Your so career. Wow. That I needed to grow. I needed. To, and there are some character flaws that I had then. So God was trying to pull me to refine. Mm. And He wanted to teach me to enjoy myself in every season of life. In every season, I love it. In the way. Waiting season. Some people are waiting, but they are waiting with bitterness, grumpily, grumpily, grumbling, complaining. Like God, mm -hmm. is, uh, like God is their mate, and like saying, you know, they say, God, if, if I don't get married by December, I'm not, I'm not. By this time, exactly. And <laughs> we're giving God exactly. ultimatum. Wow. <laughs> and you know that moment, it was a defining moment for me because it taught me mm -hmm. a shift in perspective. So like, yeah. And as we, as women, we go through seasons of life. Sometimes you're waiting to be married. You're waiting to have children. You're waiting for your children to graduate. You're waiting for exactly. There are different seasons of life. Maybe you're waiting for a job. You're waiting for a career promotion. You're at different seasons of life. How do you maximize those seasons? You can maximize them when you understand them. You understand yes. why you are in that season, before, why you are before. parents, why you are called to be a wife, what you are supposed mm. They say the children of Issachar, they understood the time and they knew what to do. To do, yes. They didn't um, just understand the times. They knew exactly what, what to do. do. Because mm -hmm. um, what to do comes from a place of understanding. Yes. If you yes. understand your season, you can't know what to do. You wouldn't know if you're doing the right thing or if you're doing the wrong thing. Mm. You will be the wrong person like okay let's say during um winter you know that you're supposed mm. to dress you're supposed to cover up cover up yes summer you know you're supposed to dress light you yes. know what to do because you understand this is the season of your life the same thing with the farmers. Look at farmers there are different seasons in agriculture when a farmer mm -hmm. is called to the planting season he mm. knows that this is the time to till the soil and they know what to yes. do you know that this is the time to probably put fertilizer, weed, mm. and wait until the harvest blooms. They know what to do because they understand this timing. And mm. like we started, life is in seasons and time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, There is a time everything for under the everything sun. and a season for every purpose under heaven. Mm. And I'm just going to... Um, I, I believe I, I don't know if people are following me. I just want to see chat. We are. Yeah, we can see. Um, Chinwe has said that yes, she's agreeing with us that the waiting season should be right. a period of preparation for our next season, right? So yes. I've just laid the foundation about understanding what your season mm. be, and um, the next thing I would like to talk about is the different seasons of life. Mm. The difference is I can see you, Tikpa, I can see you. So I want to talk about the different seasons of life because when you have an understanding, you understand that time, time is not waiting for you. Time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, life is measured in time. Not mm. measured in material things. Life is measured yes. in time. Like that's why we say, how old are you? There's a True. girl is supposed to be like her, she's supposed to be in puberty. 
there's a time a woman is expected to bear fruit and give birth. That's why they say if she has reached this age, she can no longer biological, biological, biological. <laughs> So life is measured in time and seasons. So you can't True. I'll live my life anyhow because when your time has passed, you are already you've wasted that season. You wasted mm. that season. And a wasted season is a wasted life, it's a wasted purpose. Whatever purpose God mm. was supposed to fulfill, or whatever purpose you were called to fulfill at that season of your life, because you did not understand your timing and you didn't know that everything under under the heavens, there's a time for everything and a purpose mm. for everything. Mm. You will live one and that will be a wasted opportunity. So um we're going all right i really i really really love what you said i mean when i was thinking about this topic i didn't even think to some of the directions that you said but i like the way that you have tied it to the scripture and that's what just you know sparked a book a light bulb moment in my head you know uh, you said that everything for everything there is a purpose and it just <laughs> god has been talking has been talking to me about the same thing for the past three days as in holy spirit i've heard sir it's okay it's all right so you don't need to flog me i have heard like literally as in it's, it's amazing you know it's been taking me on a journey about knowing what to do per time knowing what as in what knowledge opens your mind to yes you know and 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 i'm just hearing you things and i'm just screaming in my head that oh wow like what is going on and you know and i was also speaking to some sisters yesterday when i said to them that look everything that happens to you is for a reason yes like absolutely. god is intrinsically good there is no atom of bad in god he's completely and totally good so he's not going to say you're not going to say oh because oh um okay there was an example i was listening to one pastor online i can't remember his name right now and he said something about you know there was this guy in their church he had worked real hard and everything worked so hard for them and then he got admission to school so he went to school they all gathered money you know got into school he was able to finish his degree and as he was coming back home, <laughs> as he was coming back home, this guy had an accident. Wow. Like he had an accident, they had to, as it was really bad, they had to take him back to the village, you know, and everybody was just sad. Like, what kind of thing is this? When his mother was going to get respite, you know, he was going to go and start walking and everything. Like, what kind of matter is this? They just have prayed. They couldn't say anything because <laughs> far be it from them to just cause God, yeah? But everybody was really feeling some sort of way, like, what is it safe? Has this boy not suffered enough? Like, he was just about to get light, and then something happened. But guess what? As he went back to the village and he was healing, I think he had some, you know, fractures or something, and he was healing, he was sitting and he was watching the farmers walk. As he was watching them, because he's come back from the university, he's had some, some exposure and everything, he started to think about ways to, ah, can we better this thing? Can we do this? Can we do that? Before you know what's happening, today he's, he's the founder of, you know, some crowdfunding thing in agriculture, you know, it, it, the guy just literally blew wow. just because he was, he was taken back to sit down and observe things and he could find the solution. Now, if that guy had gone on normally as he had just finished school, he probably working at a desk somewhere, you know, in some job, maybe earning 250k <laughs> and feeling good with himself, like, ah, you know, I've, I've made it in yes. life. But look at where he, the other part took him. So for everything under the earth, there is a purpose. And the minute you start to believe that, the minute you start to think that God is good, right? This thing that's happening to me. So sometimes when things happen to me, this is I think, hmm, okay, Father, <laughs> this is not all right. I'm not really feeling this, but you know what? Please let me know what the lesson is. Yes. Right? It's uh, always that for me. Please let me know what the lesson is. I mean, I can't waste this pain. Yes. Let yeah. me not miss the lesson in this situation. Because that's so, and since I started to think in that way, it was just a game changer. Like, instead of thinking, oh God, why me? You know how people always say when it rains, it pours. Like, something's happening, next one's happening, next one's happening. Like, ah, ah, what, what is this? What did I do? Exactly. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That's not the time. This is the time to say, okay, God, I do realize you're a good God, right? I mean, you have not changed. Yeah. So, what is this? What is it about this season that I'm supposed to learn? What is it about this things that happened to me that you're trying to teach me? Are you trying to correct a flaw in me? Are you trying to open my eyes to something? Are you trying to pull me away from something? What is it about this season? Let me know. And it just, you know, you just get a mm. peace, you know, and you just have to see. I mean, just imagine that guy, if he was in that, his wheelchair or whatever, and cursing God, <laughs> thinking, you just God. After all, I've <laughs> served you in church. All the years I've served. This is how you repay me. Would he be able to think? Would he be able to open his mind to, you know, see solutions? No. 
so the, the, so the thinking about the fact that you know everything has a reason and and god is intrinsically good so not only does everything have a reason god is good so his reason has to be good you see? Oh, so everything has a purpose so that thinking okay. alone changes, changes the game radically radic change of game yeah. so i just wanted to put that out there because it was it's a lesson that god has been teaching me and i just thought oh my god here it is again <laughs> okay, so, but i i just got something you're so right you you said something and i'll just say there's a reason for the season there's a reason yes. for the season and Absolutely. everything like you said is about perspective coach wendy mm -hmm. tells about perspective putting things in perspective the gift of perspective for mm. the season of your life. It might not be good seasons, you know, there are rainy seasons and there are sunny seasons. But each mm. of them, they connect together to form the big picture of what your purpose and life is. Mm. Absolutely. Yourself, yourself being in the prison would look like God has abandoned Like this guy again, you that they sold. God now saved you from um, slavery again. Right. Prison, what happened? It's like ah, this guy again. But there he was. The next step he needed mm -hmm. to get him to the palace. Exactly. And he, guess what? It wasn't even just about him. Mm. It was about saving the entire Israel nation. Exactly. And that thing blew my mind. The day I understood it, like I, I'd always thought about the story of Joseph as you know what? You know, this was this dreamer. You know, he wanted to be sold, and God just delivered him from his brothers and everything and everything. I said, Amen. You know, he went to the prison from prison to palace. You know that, you know that normal narrative. <laughs> the day I read it, and it, it it clicked to me that my goodness, yes. it wasn't even about, about him. It was about saving the entire Israel nation. You know, when Israel finally got into slavery with Egypt, how did the Bible put it? There came a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. Wow. Like he had to get to a point where they did not hear about Joseph before they could treat them anyhow. Because Joseph was in, it was, you know, critical to the saving of the entire Israel nation. Saving them from, they would have died of famine. They would have completely been wiped out. But because he was there, not only did Egypt get saved, Israel got saved. And, ah, oh, come on. Trust of him. Mm. It's, it's it's so awesome and then um, thank you so much for this inviting me like i said i'm also here it's a lot when we understand mm -hmm. of purpose and the reason for the season it just changes our attitude our perspective and mm. how we live our lives we're not just going to think that we are wasting our time we're not just going to think like just like a mother when she on mm. the season of making sure that the future of her Friend. the early days of the children's life you're not mm. you're wasting your time just spending your time as a mother in yes and the same thing with um, a woman two different seasons of her life you give your best mm. you understand it's not just about you it's about the generations that are connected to you to you absolutely all right, all right. Absolutely. As a, I mean, this 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 thing, eh? We, it wasn't meant to be a preaching. I don't know how we have entered into preaching, but you know what? I love it. There's never any. I mean, we, we never shy away from having the chance to share the word. And I know it's not it's not essentially a a a church platform yeah. in quotes, but we are Christian women, and we we will teach with the principles that we know, which are the principles of the Bible, and so that's fine. Okay. Please feel free to give me the Bible verses. I'm okay. I'm ready. Don't 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 feel like you have to um you know um diffuse your message because you're feeling like it has to be you know understandable by everybody. Most people know the story of Joseph, whether or not you're Christian, most people know the stories that we are sharing. So it's it's fine. Okay, we're just going to buttress our points. And and I mean something that even struck me as we we're talking about Joseph was the fact that you know, you know, we've been talking about understanding your system. So it's one thing to understand it, it's quite another to maximize it exactly. so i when i there's a class i teach on monetizing your gifts now when i teach that class i use joseph as my case study wow and it, it's very interesting to that the holy spirit broke it down for me it was i said i said this joseph what yeah. i discovered about joseph's story that it was just i was like oh my god I need now for that class <laughs> so here's how i break it down in summary joseph was gifted right he was gifted with the gift of dreams and he started to, you know, 
he said he was gifted with the gift of interpretation because everybody dreams, right? He was gifted with his own gift was interpretation of dreams because not only could he dream, he could interpret his dreams. Yes. So he started by interpreting his own dreams, and that was how he started to hone the skill. He would interpret, he would go and tell his brothers who, who didn't care, who couldn't care less, but he was constantly interpreting his dreams, and that is what was honing the skill for him, right? So that's stage one. You get the gift and then you hone the gift. Yes. Now, stage two was when he now got into the you know Potiphar's pile from Potiphar's house going to the the, the prison, and in the prison he saw two people that were just looking on their own. They were not. They did not call him. They did not ask him. He did not. But it was the compassion in him that led him to ask them that ah, what's going on? You're not looking yourself today. What's happening? I mean, you're not normally you're brighter than this. Is ah, we had a dream. Oh, we had a dream. Let me try and help you. You see. He now offered himself. So now, not only are you honing your your skill, your gifts, you are now using mm. it. So mm. you have to yes. use it now. So I started to use it. So he used it for the baker and the the chief, uh, the pharaoh's uh, bearer. He used the gifts. So as he used them, and he now told them that okay, they now discovered that what he told them actually came true. And they were about one was about to be released, and I was about to be killed. And he said, "Please remember me when you get to Pharaoh. Tell him about me." Guess what he was in there. He was advertising his gift. Some of us will have a gift and then we're just keeping quiet. I don't know. Let me not be as if I'm talking too much. Let me not be telling you. Excuse me. I teach people how to monetize your gifts. I've just finished advertising my own now. Okay. Anyway, come back to the story. <laughs> so, you know, he was he was advertising the gift. You have to, you have to advertise it. So people in your circle don't even know what you do. Some people don't even know what you can help them with. They are going to take your money and go and pay somebody else. Mm. They think that you can, the service you can provide for them just because they don't know that you oh. do this. So you have to advertise it. Now, he advertised, and guess what? The season now came where Pharaoh called him. And so he had the chance to excel. Yeah. You see? So when you finally get a chance, you advertise, you advertise, when you finally get the chance and you get a chance to get work done, yes. my God, you better excel at it Wait, well. you, see? you better excel at it and so that was how joseph you know so that's how you need to those are the basic steps you need to take with monetizing any gifts that god has given you you have to first of all yes. discover it you have to hunt it you have to advertise it then when you finally get a chance you have to excel at it so that people will not call you more and more, and more. <laughs> now wow. so that was my side preaching so, and my i mean my, my side teaching I, for the day so like <laughs> I'm here to learn from you in this life. <laughs> it was it was my side yeah. trip for the day, and and I I actually was going to I got to that point where I was talking because I was trying to talk about maximizing the gifts, yes. right? Yeah. So yeah. and and I said that Joseph was the thought that got me down that whole route. Don't mind me. Was that Joseph actually maximized his gifts to the best of his ability, of right? He didn't just, just keep it with him. You know, he maximized it. So when you, and, and maximized the season, he found himself in the prison mm -hmm. so he was in the prison but he wasn't feeling sad mm -hmm. right he was in the prison he wasn't grouchy he was in the prison and he was just like well god loves me i know this if i'm god, here that, this is where i'm supposed to be and, and he removed himself from his feelings and noticed the people that were not feeling okay you see because of his attitude in that season mm -hmm. that was how he was able to get elevated if you had been there squeezing his face and thinking every time, every time, I couldn't do anything to that woman. And yet this man that I've been serving so faithfully threw me into the prison. Well, God will judge me and them. And he had been squeezing his face. He would not have noticed these people that were not okay. He would not have been able to offer his gifts. He would not have been able to get called to the palace. You see? Now that was the point I was trying to make before I entered into monetizing. Don't mind me. I was talking about maximizing the season where he found himself inside the prison. And that was how he was able to get out of it. So, says. So Give me more examples, please. Some of that. I was just helping talk about the things that I talk about here. Yes. How much himself was one man who understood the different seasons of his life. He understood. Yes. He knew the season, he knew where he was going. Mm. And so the whole picture wasn't him. So I'm just about the different seasons of life and mm. based on some of the things that I've learned, um, one of the things that Coach Wendy also said about that we have to stop finding our season, but start framing our strategy by observing mm. the trends in our time. Now, there are, mm. three, there are three 
seasons for a person purpose. There are three seasons for a person purpose. The first okay. season is the season of victory. Season of the season of victory. That victory. Like your plan. Let me say for a farmer, it's like your planting season. Or for a pregnant woman, it's like the season of fertilization when the embryo is begin to form is like, like when the child when you notice you're pregnant that is the season. yes it's the first stage the season of vision. then there's the season of building and proving right. season of vision that's why in the book of Joel sorry I'm coming back to the Bible again in the book of Joel your young men shall see or dream your young men shall see visions so as mm. a person or at the early stage of your life, you should, mm. let me just say, the first 20, 25 years of your life, you yes. have been in born in the state of vision. That's why we ask children, what do you want to become when you grow mm -hmm. up? Yeah. When We're you trying to get them to exactly, envision what they want. Exactly. To when the seed is being planted in them, at mm. that age, can take an example someone like joseph he had a dream at the age of 17. that means that mm. someone had already been put in him that he was going to be a leader a star the same thing with um david at the age of 17 he was anointed to be king mm. so he had a, a shepherd a leader the same with jesus at the age of 12. he he's mm. what i mean in the temple he said must be at my father's business. That means okay. he, had a, he knew that he was going to be called to be a savior. For his father's so, business, yeah. I, we we need to, as mothers, we need to, even as women, we need to raise children that have a clear picture. That's one of the things, Coach. When they try to say about family launch launch plan, they have a clear mm. picture of their vision because mm. children that get it early, that have their vision early. They don't struggle. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they have a direction. Exactly. There's a clear exactly. focus. They're not, they're not yeah. trying, trying, exactly. trying and failing. They're a lot of things. They're not wanting mm. to hear to hear. They're not making mistakes because their mm. plan has been defined. And so, I love it. Just like someone that wants to play football. You don't come at the age of 40 and start saying you want to be a footballer. <laughs> Sorry, sir. Your mates have retired. Exactly. You should have <laughs> a long time ago so the first stage is the season of vision it's like the planting stage it's like the stage it's like that period where of discovery is the age of discovery where you right. find to define you find out your it's like your self-awareness of discovery season what is mm. it that you are called to do to become what is it that god has wired you for yes the political space I used to be in the um, religious space, academic, mm -hmm. sports, yeah, educational, yeah. exactly, sport, music, whatever it is, find your path. Mm. That's for a person of purpose. Now, the second is the building season and the proving season. The building and that's what most people because it's that and say, oh, I want to do this. It's hard. Exactly. Just like you now, you got a vision to start the Women's Growth Academy. That's it. Mm. That's it. That's it. And prove this. It's not going to be easy. Whether you feel like it or you don't feel like it, life will prove you whether you are really going to be committed to this vision. A lot, mm. a lot of people start grand things, grand visions, grand ideas. They started this, but they weren't able to stay through the building. Just like Joseph, you talked about Joseph. Mm. When he was in the prison, he was being proved. Mm. The, the um, Potiphar's place, he was, that was his building. He was building administrative skills. Yes. That's your season of beauty. Like your, Coach Wendy calls it, there is a servant stage. Mm. You know, she talks mm. about the program. When yes. is time for you to that um the, the word she used that time she said when it's time for you to serve or yes. that nature that is your building and your proving system. yes that connection is breaking no i thought it was only me that's why i didn't talk your oh, connection is breaking can you hear 
hear me clearly? We can hear you clearly now. Yes. I think um, some calls interrupted me. Okay. So okay. I don't know if you heard when I talked about the season of vision, that's your planting and seed. Yes. We heard you. Actually, we heard you. We just, it could be better. Okay. So we heard you. And the second is your building and your proving. And proving. So mm. for every masterpiece woman that is doing something, Coach Wendy did yes. just arrive today. She has had her season of building mm. last five years with the intentional parenting program and um, she has had a season of proving Prove. mm. in a live session you just come up nobody shows up you have to prove whether you are going to be committed or not absolutely yeah you have to prove whether you're going to be committed to stay and your proving is going to be proving you in terms of your capacity, your mm. attitude, your there are things there are sure. and values that are supposed to be put inside of you. Mm -hmm. The pursuit. Are you going to be ready to commit, stay through? And then because the, remember the days, because the evil days are coming. That's the days mm. of trial, the days of testing, when people open mm. you. People will offend you. I going to say, oh, yes, I'm yes. because first, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> All those things. Will you be diligent whether people are applauding you or nobody is applauding you? So that's mm. the stage. And usually between the age of 25 to 40, 50, 40, 50 or so, so that should be your building stage. By by the time you're clocking 40, that's why they say a fool at 40 is a fool forever. By the time you're like we can't help we can't help you again. Exactly. By the time you're clocking 40 and you're 50, that should be your mm -hmm. no showing forth. Your yes. No showing forth. Because at that time, you your your vision, the things you have done, you start bearing people start hearing about but the thing about life is that there are people that they are going forth even begins before that time. Yes. Ballers, when they start early at the age of 12, 13, mm -hmm. they are showing mm -hmm. much faster. So, yes. Earlier, you start planning your vision and building, and how intense, how committed are you with your building, with your proving? Mm -hmm. If you're ready, if you're ready to go through the the process and do it so well, and you don't jump rounds, you're mm -hmm. showing so fast. So, um. Absolutely. P R O O V I N G. So there's a season of fruit bearing, the season of showing forth, and that's your season of harvest. So now is an error when someone wants to be in their season of harvest when they have not sown, when they have not planted, they've not sowed, they've not, uh, they've not built. They've not built. I love it. They've not built. They've not planted, but they want mm. to. Enjoy the benefits that you see, um, Coach Wendy. Like you see somebody like, yeah, you see somebody like Mama Adele exactly. Funke, Pastor Funke doing things. I was feeling free and to, you know, that woman, every time she's spouting things, I wonder, my goodness, but for many years, she has been building, exactly. building her, comp her, her competence on the word, building her, you know, building her skills and her capacity very quietly. Many times the building stage is very quiet. Yes, Most people don't see. Yes, that's and so when somebody shows up, you now think, ah, this guy came out from nowhere. We find that a lot with the artists. We find that a lot with the with even pastors. The other day, Pastor Jerry yes. was speaking, and he said that, was it that for 10 years, he was praying at midnight at a certain oh, hour every day. As in, the day I heard it, I was just like, I was like, oh my God. Like non-stop, no, never once oh. missed it. So when people have been building for years, very quietly, you didn't see anything. Then the day that they show forth, you think, ah, person is a one night wonder. God means I want to, be, I want to please, Lord, show yourself in me, Auntie. Have you exactly? Seen it? And then we'll be covered. Have you put your head down to build? Exactly. Maybe comparing yourself. Exactly. That's the thing. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to say. Uh, what are the things that are bought seasons? Comparison. Hmm. Things that are bought your season when you compare yourself not knowing that this person is already in their harvest or showing from yeah, in stage three you are just in stage one you're just in stage one you're just starting you're in elementary school and you're comparing someone that i love it someone that's i love it 
I know this thing is something I teach, even when I'm talking about this, my monetizing of gifts. You know, I say to people that everybody has gifts. There's nobody that God created that did not give something with. Now, whether you have one or five is a different conversation, oh. right? Because even in the Bible, in the parable of the talents, God gave one person one, gave one person two, gave one person five. Mm -hmm. It's not because God is not a good God. It's not because yeah. God is not just. It's, it's probably, and it was not mentioned, I know, but it is very probable that the guy that was given five has first been given one and he delivered. Mm -hmm. Then he moved up to two. Mm -hmm. He had first been, he'd been given two and he delivered and then he moved up to five. Because if you do not, when, most times when God takes you through a season, it is to make you get to your next of level. Course. Because at your next level, you cannot be trusted with mm. more. So if you are at Brenda 1.0 and you don't pass through the test eh, to get to your Brenda 2.0, yes. you will not be able to deliver on the things that God wants you to do at that level. So you will be there. Oh, you will repeat the class and, until the day that you can pass the test. And you'll be envy. To get to the next level. You'll be envy that people say, ah, all of us are here together now. We were, I mean, we've all done five years in this industry. Why is she doing this? I'm not doing that. Auntie, have you passed your test? Have you gone to your level two? Exactly. Even in games, even our children that play games can explain these levels to us very quickly. If you cannot understand it. If you don't even understand games, remember your, when you were in school, oh. if you don't pass JS1, you can't get to JS2. It's oh. levels. Yes. And these are the levels Life that you are using. Levels and seasons. seasons. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. One of the things that about seasons is comparison. Like you said, sometimes the beauty season is a hidden season, the silent mm. And in those seasons, it's easy for you to start comparing yourself. Oh, my mm. mates have passed me. This person has got, this person has, mm. God is saying, this is your building season. Stay, 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 stay. David was in the cave. David was in the bush for so long. Mm. At the time when he killed uh, Goliath, the giant, that was showing for, so know your mm. season, understand your season, mm. maximize it. And then you can enjoy the seasons as well when they come. No jumping of class, my sister. No jumping, no. There's no double promotion here. <laughs> Life was good. Because uh, when someone comes out without being prepared and mm. only like a fruit, like a fruit that is not ripe, when these mm. that are forced to ripe, you notice that there's a difference in their taste and, Absolutely. and the kind of results that they carry. So, mm. you know, person that will come up half baked and will now your results will not last long, will not stand the test of time, or you even put God to shame because you did not mm. allow yourself. Hey, my sister, like, that put God to shame. Okay. Have mercy on us, Lord. Is is the greatest fear of yes. everything. You know how you know how we are supposed to be when they say you're supposed to be holy as a heaven, Father is holy. You know, I, I don't even like to go into this holiness conversation, but, you know, I always try to say that my father is excellent, yeah. right? And if anything I'm going to do is not excellent, I am not shrinking for the seed of my yes. father. Yes. Right? I'm not shrinking for the seed of my father. How am I going to go? There was, in fact, there was a, either it was the message version. I need to find that, that scripture. There was a verse that said something about, do not disgrace the brotherhood. <laughs> As in, today I saw it, I bust laugh. I have to find that person. It was, it was talking about, you know, yeah. talking about, you know, being, um, yeah. about your, your character and all of that. And he said, do not disgrace the brotherhood. And I was like, yes, that and is the, it. That, that, Everything that you do, yeah. you are putting, if Christ has put his name on you, so you cannot afford to disgrace the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. You must do it well. Mm -hmm. There are people that do that, actually. Mm. There, are, there are women that do that. There are children mm. that that because they were not prepared because mm. the, the things that was well, so one of the things that even about seasons unpreparedness just like mm. you know, not prepared to be a mother she now gets pregnant mm. at that point in time that season she has what it takes to be a mother but that's not the right season yes it's, your, it's a disgrace to the brotherhood or is it to the sisterhood because <laughs> getting pregnant when you know, that's not the right season. And then mm. when the time comes for her to get pregnant, she's of age, she's married and all that. At that point in time, she's prepared, both physically, emotionally and all that. So prepared, yeah. comparing, um, a lot of things that uh, talk about. And so like you said something about um, um, there's an like when you said you were talking about um, uh, maximizing your season, we've talked yeah. about three seasons, the three seasons, 
and the different mm. type of season. We talk about understanding your season. Um, yes that about your season i think i mentioned a few of them i'm just now going to yeah. wrap up with how do you maximize the season like you talked about you say something like he advertised himself that's mm. one way to maximize your season. what are you putting out there that people can mm. reckon with what are you doing what are you doing what can people like reckon you with okay they say okay when mm. uh, brenda they'll say okay women's growth academy all those so, started by saying you have to start early, discover mm. that vision, discover that thing that God wants to do. Then the next, be diligent at it. Yes. You have to be diligent at that God has called you. So, your focus you will be done. The God that wants huge capacity. Grow, 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 grow. There's mm. never a uh, how like the next never stops. There's never a time to say, Oh, I have a right. No, so we can't arrive exactly. until until you go six feet under. Exactly. We are constantly learning. Yes. So the moment you stop learning, you start dying. And someone mm. will over from you. You see what happened to um um some products, some products that came out many years ago because they did not evolve. In, mm. we hear about the Nokia story, we hear about yeah. the box office, the Blackberry, exactly the Blackberry story, and the Netflix story with the box office. So that means that no matter your season, season you're going to remain a rainy season forever. Times which, mm. and when the world is evolving, you have to evolve with the world. It's oh, like, the world yes, you become extinct, exactly. If not, you become extinct, or the world will leave you. Like, now we are talking about like I I was in China that period you were discussing with me, I was in China I just noticed that a lot of their technologies have evolved from petroleum to electric and electric. Mm. and I was thinking to myself are we in the African nation are we ready for this this tutorial that we are boasting in evolving yeah. Yeah. That nobody's waiting for you. Life is moving. Time is moving. Absolutely. Time Absolutely. You for time is moving. So you have to be growing. That's why I love the caption of the women's growth. Growing. Uh, well, constantly yes, growing. In capacity. If not, you would be left behind. So we talked about Absolutely. diligence. Uh, having focus building capacity the last thing i want to say is prayer mm. you cannot see there's something called the god of times and mm. much a man tries to calculate just like i said oh i calculated i should have there are still forces just like there are first good forces and bad forces mm. that control people's in the dark world there are people that come they say oh they are taking this person's seasons 10 years backward that's why you mm. know, they graduated first class but yeah they don't have a good job something is wrong so that's the essence of prayer that's because you understand that yes we should be we should be diligent we should be focused we should work hard we should not waste time we should not procrastinate but my dear sisters there's still a place mm. of a God that controls the times and times seasons. Season. Of mm. So you can't even um, live in that ignorance that, oh, yes, you can make it plan today. He said, oh, the, uh, I, the plans of what are with God, but it is God that gives the... So you can make a plan, but it's God that gives the ultimate decision at the end of the day. Absolutely. As, Absolutely. And you, you, you don't just that oh i will i will not pray about my life i'll not pray there are something there are things that they call the future forward prayers in the sense that sometimes i, I tell myself a prayer i tell god i want to be at the right place at the right time for the right purpose with the right people mm. I, I didn't have the right people no. i have to be adding that one <laughs> i love it so, i have to be adding it's so that important because you find out sometimes some people are at the right place but they don't have the right men to lift them up and 
life can be so hard without the right people. Without the right So you are the right place at the right time for the right reason. All right. And the right yes, mm. very profound prayer that we pray because sometimes you think that you've gotten it all settled and everything, but one thing will be missing. You mm. don't have the right at the right place. Or maybe you are the right place, you are the wrong place at the right time. They would, mm -hmm. yeah, five minutes earlier, they would have they would have given you that job. They would have given you that I know. Job. If, you had come, if you had made this investment ten years ago, you'd have gotten this. No. So you ask God to give you that wisdom, that discernment to make these prayers the prayer of mercy, even if mm. first time when you pray. God has a way. They say, I will restore to you the years. Yes, time. They can't come as Nothing. Mm. Because God lives in eternity. He mm -hmm. So he's, he's the God that yes, time. He can change your time. See what happened to Joseph. He compressed all those years. And in mm -hmm. of how many, overnight, everything he didn't have, he had it. Yeah. So yeah. one thing. Last thing I would want every woman to have at the back of their mind, even when you're living with an understanding of yourself, you understand that there is a God who still controls the time. In the affairs of, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Amazing. Wow, Dr. Adana, you took us to school and took us to church at the same time. Oh my goodness. Ladies, please, if you're on the, on the call, please just help me appreciate Thank our guest. Like, I was just like, my head was blowing. See me. I was just typing. I said, me, I can't write these notes alone for myself. <laughs> Let me share it with my people. As I was typing for people, I'm doing my screenshots so I don't lose this, oh, wow. this note that I have written wow. on the screen. So amazing, amazing, amazing. If you have any questions, this is the right time yes. to ask your questions. Thank you. They're showing their love for oh. you and seeing the hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I mean, was that a powerful session or was that a powerful session my goodness i'm just like i'm screaming here like come on amazing thank you so much now maybe do, does anybody have any questions i mean yeah. i can just imagine that many of us sometimes find ourselves in the situation thinking matter this is that they're saying it's very it's, it's good though. it's very nice sounding but it's not as easy as that like you know when you're really faced sometimes they say you are being a, a, a a hard place, uh, a rock and a hard place. How do you, how do you make decisions at those times? How do you, you know, how do you, and, and this is, this is, maybe that will be the conversation for next week, making decisions, right? Because I'm thinking that many, many times as women, we're faced with so many things. Sometimes you're thinking, ah, is it, should I please my husband? Should I please my boss? Should I please, you know, you know, there's always so many things that are happening. And you're thinking, you know, okay, let me give you an example. I, it's not me. I read it on Instagram about this lady who said, I'm sure everyone has read that, but anyway, it went quite viral, about this lady who said that she married her husband and the man, okay, it was even the man that was reporting her. The eh. man came to report her to the court of public opinion that his wife, that she does not understand the meaning of stay at home, that in fact, when they got married, they agreed that, you know, he said he told her that she would be a stay at home wife because that's what his mother was. And he knows how him and his sister enjoyed for that. So she, she, he told her and she agreed. No, he even said that he said that she will not marry her unless she agrees. And she agreed, yeah? And she's been staying at home. He now said, but the other day, about some three years ago, he had a stint. Hmm? And then since then, the wife has not, she said she forgave him, but since then she has been taking, she has not been taking they stay at home seriously you know she's just been she's been going to school going to the and the one that is paying him that she, she just leaves the children in the hands of nannies and this is not what they agreed that please someone should help him explain to his wife the real meaning of stay at home that she's not really staying at home <laughs> Seriously. just just imagine in that kind of, guess what the wife now sent in her response that post is my husband is media talking about let me fill in the gaps for you guys. He said, do you know that this husband, she was working, with, she had a very good job. The man told her that they were about to marry. The man told her that she was not resign and stay at home, that she would not marry. Love. She now said, okay, no problem, let her stay at home. She now stayed at home. She said, these children were talking about like this. They are eight years old and 11 years old. No small baby there. She has been staying at home since all this while. Then this man now 
had an affair. She said she saw it in his phone because she discovered that phone that all of them used to use together. The man suddenly said having password. No, no. Ah. So what was going on is your phone. And she now, you know, did some investigation and also that there was a kick in his office. Now, bro say it should not work. Now you are not having you're not having you're not liking what class, you know, yeah. um working yeah. class girl. Like, hello, wow. wow. Now she found out and she discovered that even when he travels, he buys her the same thing as this girl. So the same shoe and bag that he buys for her is what he buys for the girl. She now said, What? Of course she, she called him out. The man said, Oh, he's sorry, he's sorry, it was a mistake, it was a this he's not gonna do it again. My sister said, Okay, she believes you, she forgives you. But she just realized in that season that she was at a point where she found she was helpless and she said she would never be in that position again. So she dusted her tally and her brother, God being so kind, paid for Lagos Business School for her. She was going to go and do a course there. She was not doing some small business here and there. She said, oh, she don't mind them that she has never left the children alone at home. Mm -hmm. like, in fact, she has a sister living with her. So the children are either with the nanny and the sister mm -hmm. or the nanny and their father. There's never a time that she has left them alone with nanny. Mm -hmm. So all this one that is saying, the children are all right. I wish not worry. The children are very okay. That she's got that covered. That she's as in when she brought her own part of the story, everybody's like, Come on, the sister who is proud of you. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and things like that happened. She realized that, you know, she was in that season, the first season where she was taking care of her family and all of that. And she was ready to do she was not happy doing it too, because she was actually threatened. The man used his mouth to tell us that she threatened her. So it's not even her that said it. It was only threatened to stay at home. And she, she, you know, out of love, she agreed and said, Let me do it. And then bros, you now renege on the agreement. When you were telling me at home, was the plan to be having, you know, faffing around with all the other women in the office? No way. When she found that you've broken the agreement, so all bets are off. She said, I will not remain at your mess yes. if you mm -hmm. cannot be trusted. Mm -hmm. And and so mm -hmm. I, I and, and and people would say, you know, just listen to this story that oh, did the season change or you know what was it? But I just want us to realize that sometimes Mm. You know, some things mm. happen to shift your perspective. <laughs> I've always been a working class lady. I've worked all my life. My husband met me working before we got married, right? So I've always worked. Then one bright one lady told me that I should come and sit down at home and she can't work again. My husband was not even sit down at home. He said I should sit down at home. He said I should come and work with him, which was all well and good, right? I didn't mind. I started working with him. Then I now got pregnant, and so while I got pregnant, I had to travel to have my baby. By the time I came back, it was suddenly like I said there was no space for me again. Mm -hmm. And I found myself at home looking after four children, and I was confused because I was like, this has never been me. I have never had to sit at home. So I was madly depressed, even if I do say so myself. It was quite a tough time for me. And I realized, you know, I was going through a lot mentally and everything and, and and really trying hard not to resent my husband because in my mind it was the reason why i was where i was it's me that i used my hand to resign did you know it's, even though he told me to come out with him he was by force yeah i don't know but i i sure was resenting him i was resenting him because he's one that got me pregnant that's why i was here that's why i didn't have work again you know it was just a whole lot going on with me but i i was in that season for four years wow four, four years but guess what? I only started to make my way out of it when I forgave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because I went to God and I was crying and I said, God, I don't understand why I'm in this season. I don't understand why I'm there. I mean, I'm a very brilliant girl. Why can't I get a job? Why can't I get something to do? What's going on with me? I was so mad. But guess what? I think God was trying to yes. teach me that I was something more than just my degrees. That I was something more than just my, you know, my this my, you know, I was so I was so full of my own intelligence, right? And, and so how I was such a fantastic architect that when that was stripped of me, I couldn't find out who I was. I was suddenly so shocked, and so I was looking at who is this person? Like I couldn't understand the person. So I think that God had to put me into that season for me to discover myself, and it was in that season I discovered my writing. Mm. It was not I've been writing since I was a child, though, but I stopped writing when I got to second. Wow. Right? I just stopped. But it was in that season where I was deeply down and there was nothing left that I discovered my writing. And you can tell, you know where of that course. writing was taking me. Oh, like, it's just like the gold that has yes. used to bless other people's lives. Absolutely. So it was, so it was, it was in that season that I discovered writing. It was in that season that I, that I, 
that I discovered that, you know, after I started to discover it, I started, I started to write, I started to express myself and feel better about my position. Because there I was, mother of four, sitting at home, I was not happy. But, you know, when I started to write and people started to respond, I was sharing my writing, people were responding, I started to feel better about myself and my status in life. And I started to see opportunities. Right? I started to do other things. I started to do some business. I started to do other things. And then the day I actually told somebody about the story about how I found myself at home, I was crying. I was like, why am I crying? I don't understand. And I realized that I had not forgiven him. Like, I felt that he was the reason why I was where I was. And I now had to lay down and say, oh, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. So, I mean, I really wailed that day. And, <laughs> and then once I left it, as in that, that 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 weight was lifted off me my sister the way the road opened wow. it was unbelievable wow. so when i tell people that honestly there's there's something that the devil is to hold you down he knows that they said when the bible says one which is a thousand and two which is ten thousand that's why he's coming between you and your husband your husband is not the enemy he's not the enemy he's not as a matter of fact it just happened that he's one that told me to come like this but that was where God was taking me anyway. You see? That's where God was taking me anyway. He's not the bad guy. He's not the enemy. But that's where God wanted, God wanted me to go through that route because there was something in there for him to teach me. That was the season. I needed to go through that season. And the minute I took away the resentment in my heart, I started to maximize the season. My goodness. Oh my God. I love this testimony i love it. i mean i i usually don't share this story because i always kind of feel like i don't want it to look like putting my husband in bad lights but i have recently realized that it's not, it was not the, it was yes. not the enemy yes. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't it was not it's part of your season and you needed mm -hmm. to go through it how, absolutely and how would your writing gifts would have been expressed if you weren't really in that season and you wouldn't cherish it the way you and probably life's less. It's your season. You need to go. It is. It is. So I want. I want every. I want to leave everybody with this word. If you can't think of anything else, if you learn nothing else from today's conversation, is to look at where you are today. Mm -hmm. Please be in a position where you are quarreling with your husband, or one boss is upsetting you at work, or somebody. You know. Hey God, I have stories for days. I had one boss that frustrated my life. Like frustrated my life. I'll go home, I'll be crying. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you know, today the guy respects me. Like everywhere he sees me, he's talking to me. I'm looking at him like, is he not this me that he's trying to abuse the office? Like, abuse me. So this guy was, this guy, he trained in the UK. And the office where I was working, all the architects were, you know, foreign trained. Some trained in America. Trained. My sister, I didn't even go to any lab. I went to Epoma. So <laughs> I was not. Uh, you understand? But because, like, you know, I told you now, I'm an intelligent person. So I was so, so full of myself. When I showed up at that interview, they didn't even notice that I'd not go to any school abroad. They just took me. Like, I was, I fit right in. But one more, this guy, he had a chip on his shoulder, and he, he did not let me hear the last of it. So every small thing, any small mistake I made, he would say, what's going to go to again? <laughs> you know, it was, it was horrible. It was horrific. <laughs> A very horrific situation. I eventually, I eventually got myself out of there, right? But today, the guy is like my biggest cheerleader. I was just looking at him like this. If I talk, he would say, Mother Brenda, you're a very intelligent person. I want to hear your opinion on this. I'm like, mm -hmm. me, the same me. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so it's just these things happen. Everything is a learning curve. Yeah. I mean, I was in my office in, in the other day in my estate. I'm, I'm the, um, I'm in the estate. Association, the residence association expo, okay. and there was one, there was one really troublesome resident, really, really troublesome, and I was frustrated. I told the chairman, I said, I'm not even doing this work again. This one is frustrating my life. He now said to me that Brenda, everything happens for a reason. Maybe God is setting you up for your next level, and where you're going to be meeting this kind of people, right? You need you to learn the skills of dealing with this kind of people. So when you get to your next level, it will not be a problem for you. This man said, God, you're not sending to come my way. This man's wallet is too much. I'm not just doing it again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even need it. This is a volunteer work. You're not paying me. Why do I have to deal with exactly. this? I'm not doing it again. <laughs> but guess what? I took his words to heart and I thought about it. That, you know what? There's no knowledge. Mm -hmm. even, even if I learn how to be more, more um, 
you know, diplomatic, just dealing with her, how to be more cautious, how to how to understand more, and how to people's other side of the The woman is no longer living in nice today. She has moved. But I have learned something from that yes. experience. So, yes. Everything mm -hmm. is for a reason. Today, when I look at my job that I do today and the people I manage, oh God, I'm managing a team of people in different categories. My stakeholders, eh? hey God, they are, they are plenty. <laughs> and you have to, you know, each one feels like I should be different to them. So I'm dealing with all of them and I'm thinking, ha, ah, this is why I met this woman in my life. <laughs> so learn how to do <laughs> to deal with such people and, and 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 the people are important they're important stakeholders i can't even just say please you like so much i want to deal with you you can't throw them away i can't but i've learned something in dealing with that woman that is helping me now deal with these important people that have that kind of car mm. you see mm. 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 Sure. you know so that that's 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 totally how it is everything everything is for a reason every single thing everything everything is happening to you every season you are in so what i was going to say is that write down what you think you're in what season you think you're in yeah. i remember that prayer to say lord show me what the lesson is mm. let me know what i need to learn in this time i don't want to miss the lesson. i don't want to miss the lesson because at the end of the day waste. you don't want to waste that pain mm. i don't want to waste the season don't waste the season don't waste the season Ada, any last words for our people because you've been so amazing tonight. Uh, I mean, look at me. I'm just, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm really, really feeling this conversation. I'm, I'm so happy that you came on live today. And thank you. Thank you, Joy Unspeakable. We're happy to have you. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. You. Um, last words. I'll just um, point it in three, three words. The first is understand your season. Ma mm. Second is maximize your season, and the mm. third, enjoy your season because enjoy things it. change. Enjoy it, mm. while it lasts. enjoy your season while it lasts. Understand it, maximize it, grow, build capacity spiritually, physically, financially. Understand it, discover the reason, define it. Mm. Then make sure you enjoy your season while it lasts. Because Absolutely. seasons change. They change. They change. They change. Amazing. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Adana. Thank you, everyone that joined us, everyone that stayed till the end. If you're catching the replay, thank you for watching this. I really hope you've been blessed as much as I have personally been today. I mean, I'm just thinking, my goodness, Holy Spirit, this life was for me. I don't know about the rest of you, but I have learned so much today, and I feel like the message was for me first. And so you can have you can have part of it too. You're all welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> but this live was brought to you by the Women's Growth Academy. We come to you with lives like this every Tuesday at 6 p.m. WAT, where we teach you things about women's matters and everything that just concerns women. We try to help you to walk through yourself because basically Women's Growth Academy is a community of women where we learn to love ourselves and love grow in love of God and of each other. We help and support each other, a supportive community. And if you want to join us, just click the link in my bio. Please follow my guest so you can hear some more sound wisdom from her and buy her books. She's just, I mean, just imagine if she could give us all of this hot, 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 how her book would be. Yes, and her latest book. Tell us about your latest journal. Just tell us. Thank you, Adin, Catherine. Okay, well, this is Winning Women Journal and Planner. It's a journal for women based on mm -hmm. five pillars of womanhood. That's the framework for Wendy taught of the Masterpiece Program. Um, mm -hmm. Finance, femininity, faith, fulfillment. Uh, the, what's the last one? I can't remember the last one. But we family. try to family, yes, family and friends. Thank you. So we try to make sure that you're able to organize your life. You know, women, we have a lot that we are doing. And just mm -hmm. you tie up everything, your season, and do everything function and you're not running crazy so it's a journal a planner helps you have a priority checklist helps you evaluate your days it also has mm. affirmations, daily affirmations because there's power in what we say those absolutely words. then it has a meal plan and a traveling mm. yeah amazing it's just how can we get it how can we get it it's for a token of five thousand naira only 
So wow. when you place your orders, we keep to you. In Thank you. Thank you. That is even so super cheap. Ah, 5,000 inside today's economy. Please keep my own. It's just start shipping my own to me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, right. ladies. Thank you all for joining. Thank you so much, Dr. Adana. I'm super excited to Thank have you, you here today. We will have to bring you back oh. because I can see that there's plenty, plenty, plenty we need to unravel from our conversations with you. I will bring you back at a later date. Don't worry. I will come back. Open the door for us when we come home because we loved you first right. day. It was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you, ladies. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And I hope you have the amazing rest of the day. See you same time next week, Tuesday, 6 p.m. W8. Bye-bye. Cheers.